in this clip we're going to prove Schur's theorem, which is basically the orthogonalization of this result that we have for um, upper triangular matrices. So we've seen before that operators um, have, there's always a basis for which an operator has an upper triangular matrix. And so now we're just going to add to that there's um, always a basis uh, which is orthonormal for which the matrix is upper triangular. And the heavy lifting here is going to be done by this result we have from chapter 5 uh, that says that um, a matrix uh, has an upper triangular basis with respect, or sorry, is upper triangular with respect to a given basis if and only if the span of those vectors is invariant. Um, so I paraphrased a little bit, but that's basically what it is. So let's see, so by um, theorem 527, <coughs> there is a basis um, for which T is upper triangular. Or, in other words, for which m of t is upper triangular. Same thing. Maybe I'm being a little sloppy with the language, so let me change it to mt. All right. Now, with that, we can apply the Gram-Schmidt procedure. to get a corresponding uh, orthonormal basis. Now, um, that theorem that I mentioned just uh, a moment ago, so that's 5.26, um, <clears throat> that one says that uh, m of t is upper triangular for this basis if and only if span v1 to vj Um, is invariant under T uh, for J equals 1 through N. Okay, but from our previous result, uh, we saw that span The span of the EJ is equal to the span of the VJs all the way through. Then we have that this is also invariant under T. all the way through. But then that same theorem, 526, says, oh, well, if all these guys are invariant, then, then the matrix of T is upper triangular. So we can use the, uh, the theorem both ways. And that gives it to us.